Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Hayden and I am 28 years old. My husband and I live in Green Bay, Wisconsin in the United States. My story and my medical charts are long. I was born two months premature and at the time they told my parents they didn't think I would live very long because no one knew what was exactly wrong with me. As the years went by, the diagnoses came rolling in. I have hydrocephalus, scoliosis, complex regional pain syndrome, thoracic outlet syndrome, and in 2014, I was the 10th person in the world to be diagnosed with FKBP14 related Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Because of all of these things, I have been in and out of the hospital my entire life. I have had more than 12 brain surgeries, three spinal fusions, and close to, if not more than 30 surgeries total. No one in my family has anything like this, but we now know that my parents were recessive carriers for the gene that I have. We don't know for sure, but we are fairly sure that my sister had some form of this Ehlers-Danlos because when she was five years old, she passed away suddenly from a brain aneurysm. My journey to a diagnosis was long and frustrating, and it also, though, gave me a life lesson on never giving up hope. It took me over 24 years of negative tests rolling in, and it was incredibly frustrating. During my sassier teenage years, I became even more frustrated with the whole process. I felt like I was a science project for my genetics team and nothing was actually helping me. So I did eventually stop going. Years later though, during one of my cardiology appointments, I met a genetic counselor, Allison Getch, at Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. She got through my sassy, stubborn teenage brain and renewed my hope for a diagnosis and you know, pushed me to want to continue testing again. I am incredibly grateful that she did because I will never forget the day that she walked into my hospital room and she got to tell me that she had a name for it. She had a diagnosis. They figured it out. To anyone with this, a condition like mine, a genetic condition of any sort, I highly recommend seeing a genetic counselor and keeping them in your care team because they were an integral piece for me, coordinating my care and eventually finding me a diagnosis. Despite having a name now for this condition, there's still so little that is known. It didn't necessarily change how my healthcare team went about my treatment. And in terms of managing this condition, I'm seen every two years and scanned to keep an eye on any aneurysms because that is a huge part of this type. I see a cardiologist every year just to keep an eye on my heart. And then overall, I just try to stay as active as I can be to keep my joints healthy. We try to eat healthy, but life is short, so we eat a lot of donuts too. I believe that a large part, though not all, in my ability to manage a lifelong chronic condition is with my attitude. I think focusing on what you can do is much more productive and helps so much more than focusing on what you cannot do. I also try and write down five things every day that make me happy, whether they're small things or big things. They remind me to focus on the positives, even on my worst days. For anyone that has been recently diagnosed, I recommend finding people that you can lean on when you need help and find things that bring you joy and go out and get those things or do those things. I love to help people and I have never, had never met anyone like myself before. So when I was diagnosed, I created a Facebook page just to try and find somebody else like me. Six years later, I am incredibly proud to say that we have 11 families that are from all over the world that can talk to each other and rely on each other for help. Um, it's a safe place for parents to get advice about their children 
and to see people that have grown up with the condition. And it's a safe place to talk about your condition with someone that gets it. Whenever I get messages from them, it brings me so much joy because I know how alone my mom was when I was growing up. I'm older than Google, and so she didn't have any way to go out and find people or answers. And now this new generation of parents, they have an entire community to lean on, which is incredible. Some of us have even gotten to meet in person because of this Facebook page, and there is honestly no way to describe how surreal it is when you meet someone for the first time after 20 something years that reflects yourself back at you. It's truly the best feeling. Out of everything that I've learned so far, I would say my biggest piece of advice would be this. Ehler Stanlos is a large part of me. It's a part of who I am and it tells a lot about my life story and it may for yours too, but don't let it define who you are. I have Ehler Stanlos, yes, but I also really love to garden. I love to cook with my husband. We love to travel and explore and there's nothing better than being with our friends and our family. For those of you that are still waiting for a diagnosis, don't lose hope. You may just be waiting for science to catch up to you and you may never find an answer, but you need to focus on making your life meaningful and still finding joy in the days that you can. And no matter where you are on your health journey, take care of yourself, but live your life to the fullest and in whatever capacity that may be, take time each day to find things that bring you joy. Thank you.